In a developing story, the search continues this morning. For a missing wife and mother in West Valley City. We had been hearing some buzz in the community that there was a woman who was missing. 28-year-old Susan Powell was last seen. Sunday night, a family dinner with other friends. It has been three days. Four days and counting. Been missing for a week. Utah gets missing persons cases almost every day. So this didn't really stand out as anything out of the normal. ABC4's Brian Carlson is live at the West Valley Police Station tonight. Until you start to hear some of the details unravel. We've learned the search warrants for the Powell's home have now been sealed off. It's strange that he came home with the kids and not her. West Valley City Police calling this one a puzzler. Call it suspicious. Not even a clue. If you see her or know anything, please contact the West Valley Police Department. Her friends and family were just starting to ask questions. They were out there with flyers, just trying to find out where she might be. Volunteers fanned out, handing out flyers of Susan Powell. Josh, after Susan went missing, he went from the guy who was talking about everything and knew everything to somebody who said nothing, knew nothing. And a husband who says he does not know what has happened to her. We know the answers are out there, and we need those who know where she is and what happened to come forward. I held a candlelight vigil a few days into her disappearance, and Josh came to that late. After the candlelight vigil was over, Josh Powell did show up here in the park with his two children, but he quickly left without saying anything. Charlie had come up to me and he was telling me, Debbie, my hands are cold, my hands are cold. And Josh scooped Charlie up and kind of pulled him away like this. And reporters were trying to chase him through the snow and he was walking away from them. You were camping with the boys? I have to go get my boys. There was no point at which Josh ever seemed to even be concerned that Susan was missing. If he wanted to help on the website, he should have detailed a timeline. He never participated in any of the massive, massive efforts that Myself and relatives and friends launched to put out flyers and malls and parking lots. He didn't seem like he was engaged at all in what was going on. It seemed like his mind was somewhere else. He spoke very briefly with local media. I've been trying to figure out what I can do so I don't sit idle I'm dealing with this repeatedly. People were upset that he didn't seem upset that she was missing. And so people thought that's because he's guilty. Josh, will you give us a comment today? Pointing the fingers at Joshua, I, I don't want to do that. It seemed like initially Josh and Susan were a pretty conservative couple, loving family, couple of kids. We learned that there was a lot of distress, a lot of turmoil in their marriage. He controlled the money, even though she was the breadwinner. Josh is very willing to spend money building himself a fancy computer. Susan doesn't get that privilege. There's Josh. my new uh, <laughs> printer. <laughs> with the drawers underneath, shelving. It's sad to look at that family and know now what was actually going on. Susan was tormented about how troubled the marriage was. She'd been really happy. He'd been a great husband. And she said that he really changed. He became not affectionate. I'm taking a picture of the back of your head. <laughs> well, awkward to talk about, but they also had issues, you know, in the bedroom. Susan was this beautiful girl, but Josh just was not interested in her sexually. It was just really weird. He kept her at arm's length. He wouldn't kiss her anymore. He wouldn't touch her. He wouldn't hold her hand. Josh and Susan's marriage reaches rock bottom in the summer of 2008. Josh and Susan are constantly fighting. They're arguing in front of the kids. Josh is exhibiting extreme control over Susan. She said, one time we were having a screaming fight, and I shoved him, pushed me back, and he goes, if you ever do that again, I'm going to hit you. But she said he never did. Susan's now starting to think about, I've got to get out of this marriage. She went to see a divorce lawyer one time for a free consultation at my advice. and. He told her to make a videotape of everything in your house. Uh, this is me, July 29th, 2008, covering all my bases, making sure that if something happens to me or my family or all of us, that our assets are documented. And here is our safe. Got all sorts of files, financial information, speakers, 5.1 surround sound. Broke this and threw all my DVDs and made a mess. There's a hole in that wall. Beautiful diamond necklace my mom bought. Jade, that's a family heirloom. It's not worth thousands of dollars, but I have assets. Hope everything works out and we're all happy and live happily ever after as much as that's possible. After she would email me a lot and 
just say it. I want to do everything in my power to save my marriage before I walk away. Josh had warned her, if you divorce me, you'll never see the children. So she stayed. Police ended up discovering the safety deposit box that Susan kept secretly from Josh at the bank where she worked. In it, they found a DVD, some savings bonds, and there was a makeshift will and testament. The last will and testament, handwritten on one piece of paper, both sides, top to bottom, side to side, there was no room to write another word. She wrote about how bad the marriage had become. She talked about a million dollar life insurance policy that Josh had taken out on her. And she told her boys she would never leave them. She even goes as far as to say, if I die, it may not be an accident. That is our biggest piece of evidence. It's her last words. There was no doubt that this document was authored by Susan. The biggest mystery of this case is why didn't police arrest Josh Powell? I was frustrated because they hadn't arrested him. I felt they had plenty of evidence to arrest him. Police have officially named Joshua Powell a person of interest in the disappearance of his wife, Susan. The West Valley City Police Department took a lot of heat for not throwing the handcuffs on Josh. There's a pile of circumstantial evidence. Is there enough there to arrest him and book him into jail and hold him accountable? Absolutely there is. Could we? No. The district attorney's office would not file any charges. They were very specific and told us that we needed to wait 12 months with no body. ABC News reached out to the DA at the time, who declined to respond to this claim and refused to comment on the case. Within days of Susan's disappearance, he had closed their bank accounts, cashed out her retirement fund, took the boys to Puyallup. People we talked to say they can't believe that Joshua Powell has emptied the house and left what is ground zero in the disappearance of his wife. They say it only casts more doubt on a man they're having an increasingly difficult time believing. I suddenly had this, this thought, I should get Josh to confess. Jennifer volunteered with the police to wear a wire. What is this? I know what I've done, and I haven't done anything. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.